Good morning, God's Ark of Safety. Please grab a seat, ASAP. Take your bulletin. Let's look some at some important announcements. You have in your bulletin as an insert this morning uh, your reading schedule for this week. I, I hope you're using this. I've been encouraging you to use this almost weekly, so please continue to do that. And um, we have a connection card that we always want to use uh, this morning or any morning. But um, I don't think we have any visitors with us this morning, but for the rest of you, uh, take your connection card if you have any prayer requests whatsoever and turn it over on the back and on the bottom. You will find four lines there that you can uh, fill out for any prayer request that you might have. And these, I just say this every week routinely, but those are prayed for as much as up to a year. So we appreciate that this morning. Take your bulletin. And um, the first thing we want to announce is um, a we're going to do it. We're going to have a concert tonight. I've got a clip for you this morning. We're going to save it until we get right down to uh, before I pray this morning. But um, um, Denise and Richard Kaiser will be here tonight in concert. Guitarist who has played nationally. He has played with Elvis Presley and Chet Atkins. This is a renowned uh, guitarist, and his wife will be joining um, him tonight, so we're looking for a great time. Um, I just want to remind you there's a, a, a supplement to the women's Bible group that's been meeting the first Wednesday night of the month. There is a supplement group that's going to be meeting every Thursday night to take the material that uh, Lori's presenting uh, into a little deeper format. So if you're interested for that, there is the information for that. Prayer room schedule, uh, you see that. And then items needed for Union Rescue Mission. I want to highlight something on that uh, note. Please, no clothing. They're inundated with clothes and have been for a long time. So for the Union Rescue Mission, every item there is definitely needed except clothing. And there's a lot of clothing in the tote right now, uh, which is okay. They will use it, but we they really don't need uh, clothing and as ask us to emphasize that to you. Uh, we want to thank everyone who made our Mother's Day a service and uh, to honor our mothers last Sunday morning. We, we just want to thank everybody who had anything to do with that because it was an absolute success across the board. Women have appreciated. I heard those comments going out the front door. And I want to add one more this morning. So if you're a mother here this morning that was not here last Sunday, we have a flower for you that was left over. Um, not left over because you weren't here, just weren't here to pick it up. But there's flowers back there with a candy bar. So please take that, or my wife will take the candy bar. But you just help yourself to the plant. We want you to enjoy that. And um, there's also back there on the counter, if you were not here last Sunday, we passed out little baby bottles representing First Way Pregnancy Center. And they're doing a fundraiser between Mother's Day and Father's Day. If you weren't here and did not get yours as a family, we encourage you to do that this morning. Please help us fill that up with your change or fit, put dollar bills in it or write a check. And um, if you want to do it privately, we have envelopes that are available. You can take care of it that way. Or you can bring the baby bottle back and they will pick it up uh, from us. Uh, men's breakfast, and we also have Operation Christmas Child there, CDs, ties and offerings, uh, baby shower, uh, that is for uh, Hannah, and the sign-up sheet is back there on the counter. Please do that today. Um, here's another announcement that's the first time out in that if we want to honor any of our graduates, whether from um, high school or university, uh, we want to honor you, so if you are a graduate or will be graduating this year uh, from high school or college, uh, please let me know because uh, we have a, a honor 
an honoring graduate day coming up. Saturday morning prayer time, uh, Facebook page, uh, across the page there, online sermons, uh, pay it forward, prayer alert, and our memory verse from Psalm 50, uh, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will glorify me. So I'm so glad for that this morning and so glad for you. Uh, before we pray, we're going to stand, but I want uh, Ryan to pl uh, play this clip for us so you can get an idea of what may uh, be available tonight at 6.30. actual Thunderbird muffler that he's turned into a guitar. So this will be an awesome concert. We want you to come be involved in that and bring somebody uh, with you this evening. I don't believe you will be uh, disappointed. Let's stand and pray and uh, ask God's blessing upon the service and upon you and upon the worship team. Father God, we come before you this morning in the awesome name of Jesus once again. Father, we pray every single day, multiple times a day for multiple time, or things and, and reasons or problems and difficulties. God, I thank you this morning that you're in a prayer answering, prayer meeting God. And you love us, and you don't want to hold, withhold any good gift from us. And I thank you, oh God, this morning for those gathered here. Father, unfortunately, we have a number of sickness, or a number of sick this morning. And so, Lord, I just pray for them. I ask your blessing upon them. I ask your healing hand upon them. And we give you thanks and praise for everything you've done and are doing and are going to do even this morning right here in our midst. God, as we always do, we pray for every other church, every other pastor, every other congregation. Father, in the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit upon our local pastors. Anoint them this morning. And may they have incredible services this morning. Father, may people be saved, people be healed, and people delivered. So, Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, we give you thanks for the church, the church of Jesus Christ. And now, Father, pour out your spirit on this service, on our people, on this worship team, and upon Jim Lindsay this morning as he breaks forth the word of God, the bread of life to us today. 
We give you praise and thanksgiving, and we will continue to give you praise and thanksgiving, Father, as we sing and as we worship you in the name of Jesus this morning. And we bind every lying, de deceiving spirit, demonic spirit of the devil, Father, as he will try to mess things up. We just bless you and thank you in Jesus' name this morning. And if you agree with that, give a hearty amen. amen. Come on. A hearty. Amen. There we go. Come on. <laughs> oh, Sam, did you do that? Amen. Our God reigns this morning. Let's lift him up. Great. 
than any other. Higher than any other. We lift your name.
your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour Only God. Lord, we just recognize your presence here this morning. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in our lives, God. God, you rule and reign in our lives in this church, God. God, we ask you to rule in our cities, God, in our nation, Lord. You reign, God. And God, you're restoring this morning, God. God, I hear that word this morning, God, restoration to your people, Lord Jesus. God, you restore, you restore. You're holy, holy God, we worship you. morning church. Transcendent. 
Ryan, put the words back up on the overhead. Go back a couple. Yeah, romancing. Start there. Sandy confirmed what I was feeling in my spirit this morning. We always have hurting people. People are hurting from all kinds of different things. They're hurting. Problems, difficulties, finances, marriages, you name it. The church goes through those same things that the world goes through. But our God is here this morning romancing you. He's pursuing you. He's reclaiming to restore us. I point my finger and say you, but I mean us because I'm part of it. Go to the next one. He's releasing hearts, transforming lives. That's what he wants to do, transform your life. From where you're at, the problems that you've got. And I'm, I tell you, I'm telling you this from 50 years of Christian walk and service, the more you do and let him into your life, the less problems you will have. I didn't say you're going to be exempt, but I'm saying the less, less problems you will have because he's holy and we are not. And he's transforming our lives to make us holy, to equip us and call us to himself. And I hope, I prayed this morning, God, roar in this place like the lion of the tribe of Judah. Roar in this place. Rawr! <coughs> How many? The MGM lion? <laughs> Rawr! Roar! That's all I've got to say, guys. God is pursuing you. Surrender your life to Him. Let Him romance you. Let Him love on you. Let Him pursue you. Let Him be holy God in your life. Holy God. Holy God. I don't have anything else. You receive that this morning? Let every ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church this morning. Well, yeah. 
as well. No, the Lord showed me to do this. Um, he says in Joel 2.25, And I will restore unto you the years the locust have eaten, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, the great army, his great army he sent among us. But here's the thing. Years ago, we did a study down in Virginia on this very passage, and we were doing a, a in the book of Joel, but also God was showing us that he means restoring our relationships between him and, the, and each other, and then also, I mean, between him and us, and then each other. And also, he's going to restore back everything you lost due to the enemy, because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes to give us abundant life. Amen. I love that. Praise God. Praise God. Greet somebody. Shake hands with somebody this morning. Love on somebody if you want to. And Jim, Lindsay, you get up here. Praise the Lord, for he is good and worthy of our praise. No matter what condition your heart, mind, or soul is in, rise up and praise the Lord. Bring him into the midst of your situation. In the midst, he wants to be in the midst of your situation. Hallelujah. Good morning. I want to open this in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, for the morning thus far. And Father God, where all of our hearts are warmed and touched by your presence. And Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Father God. You're bringing forth a people bright and shining and glowing in your glory, Lord. And Father God, you are about restoring. And Father, we just bless you today and ask your blessing now upon this word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I've got a word that was uh, complex to me. I hope I have torn it apart and dissected it enough to where it's palatable to you because it's uh, a word that I think is nourishing and uh, it's, it's really an important word, I think, for the hour. Uh, to open this up, God just wanted me to, to uh, speak a little bit, uh, not speak, but to read the word of God. And uh, I, I have found that in times of trouble, in times when I let the lizard, the serpent, the snake, whatever you want to call him, whenever you let him have a little bit of too much of your heart or mind, you ever do that? You find yourself that you've been thinking about things you ought not be thinking about, you know, and what, what, what where did that come from? And, 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 I, and I find that, that I have to direct my heart, my mind to that lizard and first of all get him out and then I have to turn to praise because I want to bring him in and restore. Listen to this. Psalms is just filled with it. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusts in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Isn't that wonderful? That's what awaits us. I mean, he was more New Testament than some of us are. I mean, we're, we're still out battling things that are external. 
trying to fix stuff out there. We need to fix stuff in here. We need to come back to that place, the hiding place, the place of intimacy with the Almighty God. I'll get into preaching and not teaching here this morning, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a good preach. Um, the Lord gave me this proverb in, in, in my searchings and whatnot. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And, you know, I read that, and I wrote it, and I read it, and I reread it, and it's uh, Proverbs 18.21. And I said, what in the world is he talking about? You ever do that with Scripture? I mean, you sit and read it, and you say, what is he, what's he trying to communicate in all of this? And, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit and try, try to figure out what, he, what he's saying. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Well, I, I tell you what, it was, it was difficult. But then God showed me that there is a verse just before this verse. And it sheds some light on an interpretation. Because oftentimes scripture has some twists to it. And we need to open up some of the twists to get down into the heart of God, what God is communicating in the midst of his word. In uh, Proverbs 18.21 is the verse we're looking at. We're looking at uh, Proverbs uh, 20. And it says in Proverbs uh, 18.20, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase shall he shall be satisfied with the fruit of the mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, in the, in the two of them tied side by side, you, you get an idea of really what, he, what he's talking about is something that I'm doing right now. I'm speaking to you. I have prepared my heart to speak to you this morning. You see, I had to do the work of the heart before this happens here. And this happens every day in a workman's life. You see, every day is faced with this. If, if, if you get a new job, the first thing that the person gives you is a job description, right? And then if you're in, in a good place, they're going to spend some time training you. They're developing this stuff in here so that you have something to what? Say. So that your lips and your words have power to make you a living. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care what you're doing. You know, it doesn't matter. But your words are going to make you a living in some way, shape, or form. And, and that's, that's an interpretation, I think, of this. And if you, love, if you love that life, you know, that it brings to us, because you know what? If you don't work, you don't eat. And if you don't eat, you die. I mean, those are pretty big pictures, you know. But, but see, th this, I think, is what, what God is, is getting at, in a, in, a, in a sense, in a simplistic sense. But you see, there's more in all of this. Now, I want you to uh, listen, listen carefully to this particular passage because it is uh, something that really does speak to what we're talking about today. Uh, it's in Luke 10, 25 through 27. And it's a conversation between a lawyer who's trying to, to mess up Jesus' ministry and uh, a certain lawyer, doesn't even name him or what he's a lawyer of or anything else. See, a certain lawyer. Uh, behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He had a good question there, right? Is, is that not a question sometimes that gets into your spirit and you wonder, gosh, am I saved? Anybody else ever ask that question internally? Or even have the enemy come in and say, you're not saved. Who do you think you are? The lizard. Anybody else have that? Or is it just me? Uh, there's a hand. I uh, Thank you. There's, there's one other one. Yeah. <laughs> if we're all truthful, it happens sooner or later to all of us. We all go through periods of doubt, questions, wonderings, you know. And the enemy is always there to embellish his side. And we've got to deal with him. We've got to know when the enemy is singing his song. And we, we need to deal with that. Um, teacher, uh, 
the question he asks is a good question. Uh, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus said to him, I love what he did because he turns it right around. He knew this guy was a lawyer, evidently, probably by the clothes he was wearing and this and that. Um, but he turns it around and he said to him, what is written in the law? You see, he knew this guy knew the law. He knew he was just getting messed with by a lawyer, you know, that was trying to pull something off. What is your reading of it? And so the lawyer said, answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with, your, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, the, the point I'd like to make with all this, how many things did he say to do? <laughs> you see, we're doers. If we get under guilt and we get under a feeling we haven't done enough for the Lord, what do we do? We go do. We go do get busy. We, we do something. We're very do-oriented. And God is more interested on becoming and being and being with him. You see, the, 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 the thief on the cross knew the reality of this, or one of the two did, right? Because one of the two, in the midst of all the jeerings and where is your God now and all this kind of stuff, you know, this one guy said, uh, remember me in your kingdom or something of that sort. Remember me. What did Jesus say to him? This day you will be with me in paradise. Wow. What did the thief do? Nothing. Right? Thank you. He did one thing. He trusted in the living God. That's what he did. And we need to trust in the living God because he is at work today in our lives dealing with a, a wicked enemy who's out to kill, steal, and destroy and to teach us the ways of warfare. And you see, when, when, the, when, when the scriptures were, were uh, um, given to us here, it, it talked about soul. It talked about heart. It talked about strength. It talked about all these inner qualities that, that are things of the inner man. The inner man. And that's sometimes things forgotten. You know? I just love Jared's word from la last week or the week before last week, you know, and it was just such an encouraging, honest word, you know, manly word, good word, you know. And, and, and he was just really getting at the whole thing that we want to fix it. We want to do it. And I tell you what, I'm having so many things in my, my time of life, you know, and I, I, I just say, uh, Lord, I don't want to fix that anymore. I'll just come over here and praise you. It's just a little bit easier for me to do that, I think, because of my age because of the passing of my wife, because of so many different things that have been going on in my life, that, that he's canceled out that whole issue of wanting to wrestle with some of the issues of life, especially the ones that the enemy brings in, the lies, trying to steal things from me, spiritual things I'm talking about, planting seeds of doubt and all that kind of stuff. Because God wants to work on your behalf in a mighty way. We sang about it this morning. It's a beautiful time of worship, fellowship. He wants to draw us into that intimacy with him. And that's really what it's all about, that we love him. We turn to him because we trust him. Not because of anything else. Not because I want to avoid the problem. You understand what I'm saying? I, I love to engage in problems, or I used to. I don't like to, to do that too much anymore. But, but, but I want to see God resolve issues. He's always surprising me with how he does stuff. Let me give you a brief testimony. I, I'm, uh, I, you know me. I like the rabbit trail, and this is a good one because it concerns me and my concerns me, fathers and sons, especially the, the, the eldest son and whatnot, um, may not necessarily get along as well as we ought. And uh, as a young Christian, I was not the very best. And uh, certainly before I was saved, I was even worse. And uh, so it's, it's been a bumpy ride. And, and I've waited 
for years to sit down and have a talk with my son. And uh, usually when I do, uh, I, it just, I can just feel a, that back step dance, you know, and uh, moving away. And so, you know, I, I've learned to just let it go and uh, wait for the time. And uh, just the other day, um, I asked a question concerning um, how, how has he been handling his mother's passing? And we never talked about it. You know, it's been three years almost, and we just haven't talked. And uh, man, it was like a, a volcano. And he was driving the car. I almost had him pull over and because <laughs> he was just getting so emotional about it and, and talked at a level. The two of us talked at a level that we had never engaged in before. And I, I'm just praying that it's a, a, the beginning of a new season for, for my son and I. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about mended relationships. You know, the, the Regina's giving, getting back that which the enemy has stolen and uh, see, the, see that uh, relationship build up to where, uh, where we want it to be in Christ. And he's doing that. And it demanded for me a lot of just pulling back, praying, asking God to do his work. And he made opportunity and encouraged me to, in the conversation. And his hand was just all over it. And it was, it was just a wonderful season, a wonderful time. So anyways, we, we move through this. We, we need to try and get back to the, the whole thing. We've been talking about the whole thing of death and life is in the power of the tongue. That is, the things that we speak can really bring death. You know, you talk about sharp tongues. Anybody ever had a sharp tongue shot out at them for whatever reason? Yeah, that's uh, a common thing. And uh, a tongue of wisdom and, and uh, you know, we can have all kinds of things come out of our mouths, but uh, uh, sometimes the, they aren't all edifying. They all aren't building up. So we want to make sure that we're, we're listening to what God is saying here this morning. Um, you can see from the, from the scriptures that, that we just read that the most important thing that we're looking at is to love God. That is, we need to turn away from all of the other babblings that are going on in our lives and love God. If this is preeminent in, in, in the whole thing of eternal life, so to speak, dealing with our soul, our spirit, our, our, man, our mind, it needs to be focusing on God, not on the problem. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? You see, we have a tendency to focus on the problem because we're fixers, or at least we think we're fixers. We like to fix. We humans are like that. We've been taught to do that, really. The inner man is something that, that, that teach, the, the word of God is teaching this and building the inner man up. And it's in this time and season that we're in that the inner man is being built up to an extent that we're going to look more and more like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you keep retreating back to where he is and you keep talking with him and you keep living your life with him in this place of intimacy, guess what? You're going to be reflecting him. Amen. And that's what he's looking for. The rising up of the sons of God, the manifestation of the sons of God in the earth. You are those sons. Remember what I always say, just because you're a lady, you're not a son. You're a son because God in Christ, there is no male or female, you know, and he looks at you as his son. And we have to understand that you're not left out by any means. So as we as we go through our, our, our study here, um, we see that um, our, our little standalone uh, interpretation of this, uh, this scripture uh, no longer stands alone. That is, the scripture is now speaking to us about something that is much larger than just feeding our faces or having a good job or being a good uh, 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 worker on the job and, and having done all of your homework to make sure that you uh, sell enough cars or you sell enough widgets or you know, uh, that kind of thing that is valuable, and you're going to reap the reward of that. But what God is talking about is something much deeper than that. 
life and death. You see, if we focus on those things that are death in the inner man, this is what we manifest to the world. If our mind is filled with negativity and stuff, this is what we're, we're manifesting to the world. We're not manifesting the love of God. And so we need to put off the old man and put on the new. And we do that by making choices. And this is, this is I think, what the, what the scripture is talking about when he talks about life and death. There's life and then there's death. You see, life is when you're, you're confronted inwardly to listening to the, 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 the drumming of the enemy or, or um, condemning yourself because of a stupid thing that you did or what, whatever you happen to do. The, the life part of that is, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me, and I love you. Now I'm going to go over here and sit on your lap. You understand what I'm saying? And I just have him put his arms around me, and, and, and I, I live in that relationship. And, and what do I do? I do what David did. He blessed the Lord, oh, my soul. Amen? Hallelujah. I sing a hallelujah. I was waiting for that song this morning. In the presence of my enemies. You see how, how mighty that song is? That song's mighty. Mighty song. Because, you know, when you can sing a song in the midst of your enemy, you got him by the tail. He cannot win because God is rising up. And he's your victor. Just like what David said in the reading this morning. He is the victor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And so the battle, the battle is this inward thing that we're dealing with. And we deal with it sometimes hour by hour, depending on your life. You know, I mean, depending on how many kids you have, too, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the, um, um, the, This whole thing of tur turning, turning inwardly is, is a turning to God, but it's also a turning to peace because he is the what? The prince of peace. You see, and here we talk about eating fruit. And this is how, how we get into this whole thing of eating that ties in with the, the, the uh, uh, proverb that we're, we're talking about. Would you r rather eat the fruit uh, of the spirit, or you want to get the fruit of bitterness. Because there are trees that you can chew from that are not good trees, <laughs> you see. And that's why he, he speaks about, about the, 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 the things of the spirit, because we're talking about spiritual things. And we're going to dine on those spiritual things when we abide with him, because that is the place where these these uh, uh, fruits begin to manifest as we are in relationship with the source of the fruit, right? When you follow the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so he keeps drawing us into this place of quiet. It's not something external. It's something in here. And God is drawing us like no other time that I've ever seen in my personal life drawing us to this inner life and coming into the place of likeness. And it's something he does, you know? Just like, uh, I'm, I'm, I wish Jared was here. I don't want to talk about him behind his back. But, uh, you know, uh, Jared's response, and, and he was very honest in saying about, about his anger and, and whatnot, you know, and uh, I just loved it because See, all of us, if the truth were known, have areas like that in our own life where we will first take the route of going out and dealing with our weakness or dealing with the issue or, or you know, uh, going nose to nose with the problem. Especially us guys. I don't know. Women don't do that, right? <laughs> we are all human. We all do it. We all fall into it. Amen. 
So the, 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 the issues we're, uh, uh, we're looking at here, the, the mind, will, and the emotion, uh, clinically, uh, it's more complex in the Bible than you would find in a clinical session, but the mind, will, and the emotion really are classified as, as the soul. And it's more for teaching's sake than it is with anything. When you start getting into the passages that we've read, we already talked about a heart, and you'll find the heart all over the Bible. And sometimes the soul and the heart are are uh, given together in the same verse. And, and, and so it's a very complex thing in the Bible when we're looking at all these inward parts of the human. But these are the eternal parts. The soul is something that does not die. And, and it's, it's, it's what really makes up who we are. And so God is very interested in, in the soul in terms of having the soul attention. A little play on words there. He wants all of our attention from those arenas. Our mind, our body, our soul is all to be turned to him. I mean, that goes back to that, that uh, whole thing about uh, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? All your strength, all your soul, all your power. You know, it's an all thing. And God is drawing us to do that. If we had to try to do that on day one, we'd all walk away. Right? I mean, we've all walked a little bit, and we're beginning to see some things. But just like the walk in the wilderness, it was all a lesson. It was teaching them day by day to live in a day-by-day -day relationship with a good, good God. I'm talking about good when the circumstances don't look good. Ask them how it looked when the enemy was coming down the mountain and the sea was in front of them. It did not look good, but he is a good, good God in the midst of the circumstances. So we sing a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies. You see, when we start doing that, the enemy will do what? Flee. He will flee. Now listen, the reality of all this is, by the time our tongues get into any kind of action, the body, soul, spirit has already done a work inside of us that's going to govern what the tongue has to say. You just all of a sudden don't dream up something and say it. It comes from in here, whatever's in there. If there's good things in there, there's going to be good things come out. If there are bad things in there, they're going to come out. You see? If we're walking with Christ, there's a sweetness in your words. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. I have uh, two of my kids at home. A vow I said I will never do. Once you go, you're gone. <laughs> and I'm, I'm to the point where I can laugh about it now. Those when, oh, you're going to be around a while. Oh, how long's a while? <laughs> and I love my kids. I really do. But you know, as you get older, guess what they want to do? They want to run your life. And sometimes my life needs to be run, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I confess. <laughs> the older I get, the more it needs to be run. And so I'm trying to preserve as much as my running <laughs> that I can preserve right now. So I listen to them every once in a while. But, <laughs> but you see, we, we, we've got to walk through this with joy. I mean, I cannot sit and walk with an animosity just because I made a law in my own heart, and said, you're not coming back here. I trained you up, sent you out. You're, you're not, you... <laughs> Had to live that vow out. So we're doing it. And you know what? You're going to live it out in joy. Or, or, or it's going to, someone's going to get hurt. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just, it's just the way it is. And so... Uh, that's a choice, you see. And then I eat of the fruit of that choice. I choose life. And then I eat the fruit of that, which is peace, joy, love, you see. And then I'm walking that out in front of my kids, 
and and uh, with with some sincerity, you know, I, you're, I'm really glad to have you with me, you know. And it, it's not easy. I've met so many parents, you know, they're going through this, and 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 they're usually these these kinds of collisions going on, and and uh, and and the answer is coming to Jesus and and walking it out in him. Let him transform you while you're going through the circumstance. Then you sing your hallelujah in the midst of the enemies. And the enemy will flee. Hallelujah. So we have this, this whole thing, the mind, will, and the emotions. It's our, our whole soul needs to be impacted spiritually. God is restoring us. I believe he's restoring us back to what I call garden man. I mean, it's a, it's a restoration that goes all the way back to what he created in the beginning. And there's so much involved uh, in the scriptures that, that talk about garden man and what his destiny was to be. You see, right now, the lizard is in charge of the earth. Well, the Lord is the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But the lizard has a sway over all things. Does he not? Yeah, he does. And that's why we're in this battle with him. The lizard was never supposed to have a sway. It wasn't his. But it got abdicated in the, uh, back in the garden with the, the tasting of the fruit and listening, listening to the enemy, really. You know, that, that's always a thing, too. Lizard, I'm going to listen to the lizard or I'm going to listen to God. Let's see, lizard, God, which one am I going to listen to? She listened to the lizard, right? Do we ever do that? You ever listen to the lizard? Sure you do. You have in the past. I don't know whether you still do or not. I still do once in a while. By being passive in the inner man. This inner man stuff should be an active thing. It's not a passive thing. It doesn't happen passively. It's a warfare thing. We are in warfare. And so you, you don't let thoughts just drift in. You, you, know, you test the spirits. Cast out thoughts that don't agree with, with uh, the, who Jesus is and what he's doing in our lives. So in closing here, um, our little scripture above speaks of the tongue as being the organ that brings life or death. According to the scripture, it says, they that love life, love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. And my question has been this whole time, I, I think I've thrown the answer out several times at this point. But what is the it that the Bible is referencing? I mean, if you just read over it, it doesn't make any sense. It didn't to me anyway for a long time. But I, I think the it is really this struggle over life and death in terms of who are we going to listen to in the inner man. It's a life and death situation. If you're going to continue listening to an enemy who lies to you and you begin to believe those lies, you're going to be shaped by that enemy. You see? And you're going to eat the fruit thereof. And it ain't good fruit. You hearing me? Yes. You know, it's life and death. It's good stuff. It really is. Because when we sing a hallelujah, in the presence of our enemies. You see, that's where we want to be in the inner man. As we're going through the struggles, as we're going through all the stuff, that we're able to lift that hallelujah up in the presence of the enemy. And he will flee. And God will stand. And he will raise a banner up on your behalf. And you shall walk in victory. And become what God wants you to be like his son, be conformed to the image of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, I just uh, bless my brothers and sisters this morning. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus for deliverance to take place in all of their lives. And Father God, a great glory rest upon them as they grow and mature. And Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this morning. I thank you for the work that you're doing. I thank you, my God, that you are a living God and a loving God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Thank you, Jim. Without a raised hand this morning, without a raised hand this morning, be honest with yourself, how many here this morning could actually do a change of what comes out of your mouth in a variety of ways? I hear people, Jim spoke truth this morning, broke truth. Too many times what comes out of our mouth is not good, and that's when we eat the fruit of it. And if we come, the good things come out of our mouth, we'll eat the fruit of that. How many would rather eat good things than bad things? Hello. We're going to have this morning for the first time in a long time. COVID kind of stopped this, but we're going to reactivate it this morning. We've talked about it in our elders meeting. And today, after the service, after I bless you, the elders will be here to pray and anoint you with oil for sickness, whatever the problem may be. Even if you've got a bad mouth here, come forward and let them pray for you, anoint you with oil for sickness, problems, difficulties, whatever it may be. And it's I, almost ironic this morning that we had one person come in the building requesting the anointing with oil for sickness. That's perfect. Someone requested it, and we were going to do it this morning. So let's stand to your feet. Let me just challenge you. Let things change that's coming out of your mouth. I thought Jim would bring this scripture. I believe it's Matthew 12, 34, that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So whatever, and he alluded to that. But Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning. Thank you. You are here. You've honored us this morning with your presence. We feel it this morning. We're experiencing this, it this morning. And we want to apply you to our lives this morning. And so, Father, thank you for the word coming forth this morning. Now, if you just want to lift your hand to heaven, and I pray with all of my heart, may the Lord bless and keep you. Over everything this week, be keep you safe, keep you well, keep you strong, keep you walking with him. May the Lord bless and keep you this week. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May you feel his shining upon you more than you would feel the warmth of the sun the physical S-U-N, outside. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace this week. And may his grace, his loving grace, go with you now, today, and for the rest of your life. His grace be upon you and your family. This morning, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. If you receive that this morning, say amen. amen. Don't forget, if you're a mom here this morning, pick up your flower and a candy bar. If you didn't get it last week, pick up your a little baby bottle and uh, come back tonight for a good concert.